Our ocean innovators today is the conservation director of the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation. He has been active in conservation for over 23 years. He manages conservation programs that have allowed the recovery of a long list of threatened plants and animals. He participates in fundraising for the foundation and is a link with the government of Mauritius on national conservation, where he has been consulted for the Wakashio wreck oil spill. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Bikash and Tataya, a conservation director of the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation. Um. Dr. Bikash, in a few words, can you tell us what is the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation and why it has been created? Uh, first of all, hello, and great to be on your show, Vic, and, uh, and to be here on, uh, for Ocean Innovators. Um, so to answer your question, the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation is a Mauritian conservation organization working on uh, terrestrial plants and animals. So we work in national parks, in nature reserves, and on islands. And we try to save those species that are of plants and animals that are on the brink of extinction. And we've indeed, we've saved quite a number of plants. And the very reason why we were created in 1984 was because at that time, and it's still true to some extent, there were many plants and animals that would have gone extinct. And we've worked tirelessly since then to prevent extinctions, and we've been very successful at it, at uh, a lot of it. So what are your actions? Well, we, have, we are well renowned for our bird conservation programs, namely the Mauritius kestrel, the pink pigeon, the echo parakeet, the Rodrigues Fodi, Rodrigues Warbler, and these are all the species that would have gone extinct and which have been saved from extinction by hands-on actions. We have also took over the management of islands, such as two important ones are Ilo Zigret, which was, has been affected by Wakashu, and the other one is Round Island in the north of Mauritius. We also work in Rodrigues, um, and we do a lot of education as well, and uh, we've uh, launched in ecotourism as well. So uh, that is, we are above all a terrestrial field-based conservation organization. So what are your needs and how can we help you? Well, if you ask any NGO, they'll tell you that the needs that, that they have is funding, because for an NGO, it's always a struggle to have enough uh, funding to keep programs going from year to year. Uh, it's certainly one of our main concerns and that keeps us really on our toes all the time uh, but we also have uh, some shortage of staff uh, of qualified staff especially that we are in the covid uh, lockdown well the borders are closed and uh, we are having problems getting international uh, volunteers and staff to come and work as they were used used to doing so Having staff, especially foreign staff, is uh, but we do train, get a lot of Mauritian staff as well. But uh, to get foreign expertise has become a bit of difficult with the COVID lock, uh, lockdown and the situation worldwide. And um, how can can you help? Uh, well, by passing the message, uh, you know, by by helping us to fundraise, by helping us to recruit uh, qualified uh, people who can come and work on our field programs. Um, and those, those in itself, those two actions would be actually really important for us. So what is the main role of MWF with regards to the current oil spill and disaster in Mauritius and what the problem that you're facing? Well, uh, the, the, we are, of course, we are very concerned by any oil spill or any wreck and any oil spill. The, we are further concerned that this wreck took place two kilometers from Ile Zigret, which is a nature reserve that we've been working very hard to restore over the past 38 years. So, um, so the minute that there was this wreck before the oil spill, we have been involved through government uh, uh, committees trying to uh, find, find out and to agree on responses 
to the uh, shipwreck, and afterwards, of course, there was the uh, the oil spill. So, um, so our role has been to try to work with the authorities to resolve this matter. It's also been communicating about this problem, which is why this is part of our our bread and butter, especially at this time of the year, where we have to communicate with both locally and internationally to put forward our views and to try to positively influence actions. Um, and thirdly, uh, we will have to start discussing with the authorities about the cleanup of the islands, uh, because there's Ilo Zigret and four other islands which have been affected by the, uh, by the oil spill, as well as two Ramsar sites of international reporters. These are wetlands and a marine park. And we are discussing with uh, whoever is about the claim that we will uh, put to the insurance. So we're discussing which avenue to go to claim uh, for damages which have been incurred because there have been, there have been damages and we need to try to recover the, the, the costs so that we can actually put, start reworking on the restoration process. So we do have, uh, unfortunately with, with Wakashio, we feel that we have a few more years of work that's been added to our plate and a plate which was already quite full as it was. Mm. And what are the biggest obstacles um, that you're facing so far? Well, there are a number of obstacles, of course, as you can imagine. Uh, and I think uh, the, the fact that we've had a, a COVID lockdown in Mauritius has been, and now with the Wakasho, has really been a double whammy for the organization. So we just put it in context, we've derived 20% of our income uh, is derived from ecotourism. And that's gone within a month or two, it's gone from 25% to zero because we are not, the, our borders are closed. Uh, and now with Wakashio, people will be less interested in going to Ilo Zigret to, uh, to follow one of our tours. So we've had significant loss in income this year and more is going to be forecasted for next year. Uh, so that's been one of the biggest obstacles. The second is uh, our staff have had to leave the island for health and safety reasons. So the work has, um, has been affected. Um, but uh, we, of course, have as great concern the health of our staff. And so we ask them that they are allowed to go home um, and, 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 and to work, work from there. But which means, unfortunately, they are not spending that, that amount of time on the island looking after the animals and uh, doing the detailed monitoring that we're used to doing. And also with, with COVID, many of our international volunteers and staff are, have been unable to come to Mauritius because there simply are no flights. All the flights have gone uh, up by quite a lot as well. And what are the, the lessons, what have you learned uh, through this entire crisis? Uh, I, I must say, first of all, that this is the first oil spill for Mauritius. And uh, so this has been a very sharp learning curve for everybody, be it the government, be it the private sector, be it NGOs. It's not like cyclones where we know we get cyclones every year and we, 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 we are born with the knowledge of cyclones and we die with the knowledge of cyclones. This is something that we were not expecting. Um, and, and there have been many lessons and one of the, the mo most important one is you have to be prepared for the worst case scenario. I would never ever have thought that at our doorsteps, two kilometers from Ilo Zigret, we would have had a, a shipwreck to be followed by an oil spill. And I would never believe that. And it's really transformed. It's really affected the organization at all levels as well. Um, and, and the lesson is be prepared for the worst. Um, I think the country could have been better prepared, and I think we could probably have been uh, more prepared for, for this uh, disaster. But what I can tell you is that the next time it happens, because there is going to be a next time, regrettably, Mauritius and the Mauritian Wildlife Foundation will be, uh, will be far more proactive and uh, will be far more responsive to an oil spill than uh, we could have been. Thank you.
very, very much, um, Dr. Vikash. Um, we will finish with a two seconds message that you would like to give to our people of action and what they can do today to help you. So Wakashu will not put us down. We will overcome this. And, and that is the message that I like to see. As hard as it is, we will overcome this, tra this tragedy. And there we go. That was Ocean Innovators release number six, celebrating 10 years to achieve United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Don't forget to press the bell button to subscribe and we will see you next time.